2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. Half a day and welcome to KUAM News Weekend Edition. I'm Nick Delgado. We hope you're enjoying your weekend here in paradise. Monday, many will be out celebrating the holiday known globally as Halloween, but police say it, it can be hazardous. Hannah Devonzo spoke with two officers to get some tips and tricks to keep you safe this October 31st. From free candy to costumes and friends, it's a day well awaited for many trick-or-treaters. Guam Police Department spokesperson Officer Berlin Sevilla says the first tip for a safe Halloween is to have a plan. That plan being that if we are going to go out in a group and uh, for whatever reasons our kids get really excited and they just kind of wander off, uh, we need to ensure that the kids know that if you look around and mommy and daddy are not there or, or the adult that's there that's taking them around is that we are going to either remain in where we're at, ask for an adult and or possibly go back to the car. Inspecting the candy is essential. One of the concerns is illicit drugs, fentanyl, right? And we have not just fentanyl but other drugs that depict it to look like candy. We would advise and recommend, strongly recommend with the parents is to inspect your candies before you allow your children to eat them. If at all cost, maybe not eat the candy prior to receiving it or while going trick-or-treating, but uh, maybe a rule that we're not gonna eat the candy until we inspect it at home thoroughly. Additionally, parents should be mindful of packaging if it looks tampered with. Guam Highway Patrol Division Officer Morgan Rages leaves a message for drivers. Please be very careful. Slow down your speed. Know that there are going to be kids crossing the street at any point in time. Hannah Devonzo, KUAM News. And police, along with Guam Crime Stoppers, is reaching out to the public for their assistance in trying to catch the person responsible for this crime committed. Here's Sergeant Paul Tapao with your Crime of the Week. Half a day. I'm Sergeant Paul Tapao, your Guam Crime Stoppers coordinator. And this is your Crime of the Week. The Guam Crime Stoppers is seeking the assistance from the community relative to a shooting incident that occurred in Mong Mong. Now, the preliminary report suggests that on Thursday, September 29, 2022, at around 9.23 in the evening, officers from the Guam Police Department responded to the Angel Care building on Robert Street in Mong Mong relative to the shooting incident. Upon the officer's arrival, they discovered a man who had sustained what appeared to be two gunshot wounds to his leg and buttocks area. The man was immediately transported to Guam Memorial Hospital for treatment and care. The officers on scene were able to ascertain information from a possible witness who indicated that a, the male victim was in the parking lot of the former Guahan gym when a gray sedan drove up. The witness further indicated that two shots were heard in which the gray sedan was seen driving towards Manabusan Street in Mong Mong. Should anyone who may have any information as to this shooting incident is kindly asked to submit a tip online at guam.crimestoppersweb.com. All tip information will remain completely confidential and a cash reward of up to $1,000 could be paid if the information provided at least an arrest and a grand jury indictment. Your call does make a difference. In this week's canvassing with KUAM, we speak with early voters as we are now in the final week of early voting before the polls open on Super Tuesday. It's the final week to vote early at the Election Return Center at the Weston and Tumon. This is a basic right that we must exercise consistently. Freedom's not free. It must be maintained. Just get it out of the way and it's just easier. I really don't want to vote early, but because of my nieces, it's better for us to do it today and then go down to Weston since they're going to cook for me. Yeah. And uh, I'm old school. I'd rather go to the poll on the last in the day. But this now, is, this is a great, uh, yes. You got it out of the way. Right, and I enjoy it. It's really convenient and comfortable. Uh, I just came to vote, you know, to support the governor and uh, just keep putting in the votes for the best people to win. More than 5,000 took advantage of the early voting sites so far. Voters like Tony Mabata of Haggett share what issues are most important to him that he wants island leaders to hear. Budgetary constraints. 
the upcoming hospital situation of uh, trying to rebuild versus make new and both that hybrid thing that um, I believe the com I believe the challenger is putting forth mm -hmm. uh, that's well really what well, really comes to first thing to mind is the uh, pro choice or no choice uh, situation Others we spoke with after they casted their ballots share similar feelings about the island's leaders. I just get the work done. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. What it is, just get it done. And so far, she's done with it. So, four more years. Okay. <laughs> I just hope they come through with what they promised during the campaign. That's Anything specific? I hope they come through for everything. Just as long as they listen to the people and uh, do what they say they're going to do and... Yeah, that's about it. The last day to vote early is November 3rd. Super Tuesday is November 8th. Have you heard of groups like BTS? K-pop has been making waves around the world, breaking language barriers and uniting millions of fans sharing a love for music. We too have our fair share of K-pop fans on island who might be pretty excited to hear this next story. As Ms. Mitsuki Hirayama reports, K-pop concerts will be gracing our shores soon. Get your light sticks ready for an experience unlike any other. JG Arts and Entertainment CEO Son Hwa Gong or Jenny G is bringing K-pop concerts to Guam. After my daughter came to uh, Guam to, to attend school here, and I started seeing all this local, uh, wonderful local cu culture also. And then I got to know that uh, the local culture also is uh, very deeply connected to music. And then, you know, I also learned that a lot of people here are interested in K-pop. JG Arts and Entertainment Communications Director Jia Camacho translates for Gong, saying the confidence backing her venture is from 20 years of experience in the broadcasting and entertainment industry. And I am myself a songwriter, and then I have a production company that develops talents in Korea. So I thought that, you know, sharing a variety of music from Korea here with the local community would be a great idea. She also has big ideas for our local musicians. We are expecting to have a great collaboration work with local artists also. So it'll be another fun for local community to see, you know, local artists and then, you know, K-pop stars having the stage together. And it's not a one-time event. She's planning for two to three concerts a year, every year. We would like to expose Guam as tourist spot to more, to many more countries, not just Korea. So basically, we're working with Korean mainstream TV stations. So this concert that happens on Guam will be streaming in 120 different countries. That's 120 countries that will be exposed to Guam, boosting our tourism industry and turning Guam into a music hub. And she's not stopping there. With a coffee shop already in the works, she's planning to invite the Korean artists for an eating show where you just may catch a glimpse of your favorite idol as early as next year. Mitsuki Hirayama, KUAM News. Coming up, the Culture Club and still to come, your sports roundup with Dave Delgado. You're watching KUAM. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Half a day, I'm Eddie Calvo, and I've had the good fortune of knowing and working with attorney Tom Fisher for several years. Tom is a highly intelligent man who knows the law, and he's very serious and mission-driven. He's focused on getting things done right and he doesn't waste time. Smart, determined, and efficient, and that's exactly what we need in the legislature. Please vote for Thomas Fisher for Senator. I'm Tom Fisher, and I approve this message. My name is Leonza Selvage, and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. Knowing that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children, I think something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about Program in Penelin from the mayor's offices here. And uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit. So when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. 
I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful for the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for childcare? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. My name is Lisa Tahaji. I'm from the village of Yamatic. I lost my job during COVID. For one year, I was staying with a family member, but I knew I had to find a place to stay. I was desperately looking for a home. I found out about the Relief Center from the Governor Liu and Lieutenant Governor Josh's Facebook page. I wasn't sure if they could help, but I thought I'd take a chance. I walked into the center and the staff was so understanding and compassionate. They helped me. Within a week, through their assistance, I was called to sign a lease agreement. My kids and I now have a roof over our heads, and I'm grateful for the help of the administration and the Relief Center. For anyone who needs any government assistance, I encourage you to visit the Relief Center. They are there to help. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Afre Guam, this is Senator Amanda Shelton. The 2022 general election is right around the corner on November 8th, and early voting has begun. Curbside and in-office voting are available Tuesday through Friday from 10 to 6 at the Westin in Tumon. Please bring a valid Guam ID, and I humbly ask for the honor of one of your votes. Sidious Maasi. Paid for by the committee to elect Amanda Shelton, number 6 Democrat, John Equal Torres Trey. KUEM News, winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. Welcome back. Here's the latest inductee to the Culture Club. Culture Club is brought to you by Tropical Ice. My name is uh, Richard Hofschneider. Um, come, I was, I'm from Tinian, but now I live on Guam. The band that I'm in, we call it ourselves Pacific Cool. Started young, and then we kind of broke off for a little bit, and now we're, some of us are back on Guam, so um, we decided to get together right before uh, um, the shutdown, uh, which was kind of unfortunate, but um, yeah, uh, so far it's been going great. We uh, play a lot of private gigs, um, we play some regular gigs, and um, yeah, we, we, enjoy, we enjoy playing the music, so... Uh, our family was very musically inclined. You know, where it all started was as kids, we just watch, you know, listen, watch, learn, and kind of emulate the, the older generation. And then we had that, that love, that passion. What started as a hobby became, you know, a way of life for us out here. And so we started singing Chamorro music, um, you know, infusing in the English um, songs too. But, but yeah, we, we love the, you know, just promoting the culture and the language and all that. So. First, you gotta know how to speak it, then you gotta translate it into song, and you gotta make it rhyme and all this and that. But um, when we were growing up, um, 
we were taught the Chamorro language from a very young age. We figured we write our own music, might as well write it in, a, in our own language. So, um, of course, with the help of like our parents and our, our, our relatives to you know proofread and spell check and you know check the check the grammar a little bit. First, I would say you have to be, you kind of have to, yeah, performing Chamorro music, you're going to have to have the stage presence because not everyone in the crowd is going to understand what you're saying. And, and if you kind of present and show like the passion or the, uh, the emotion behind the song, if it's a slow song, show, you know, show some, uh, some feeling. And then if it's a fast song, kind of, you know, that you change it up a little bit. Yeah, really important for, for, especially on the music side, to preserve our culture. All the different island nations out here, we're very unique in our own, our own ways. So it's very crucial to maintain, preserve that, that culture, that way of life. And for us, um, especially with the language, uh, you know, that's what's one way to, to promote it and to learn the language, um, to teach it too. I remember uh, growing up, if I didn't, if I was singing a song, and I didn't know the words or I didn't know the meaning, that's when I would go to the elders and be like, you know, what does this mean? What is it trying to say? So it helped us learn uh, the language a little bit. The generation, um, the work that everyone's doing, it shows. Like it, there's a you know, a vast improvement from, um, with regards to preservation of their culture. I'm super proud of that, and I'm super uh, proud of everyone that, that was taking part in that, in the movement, so. Half a day, my name is Rich from Pacific Cool, and I'm super proud to be part of KUAM's Culture Club. Culture Club is brought to you by Tropical Ice. And we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Johnny Kinata. I'm the mayor of Humatak, and I'm supporting Jonathan Savaris. Half a day. I'm Mayor Robert Hoffman, and I'm honored to be here to address you today in support of Jonathan Savaris and his candidacy for senator. John Savaris comes from a long line of public servants. His great grandfather, Vicente Sanavis of Benventu, was our village commissioner and an educator. His grandparents, Joe and Oliva Savaris, worked for the naval government. His mother, our current mayor of Dedo has been one of the longest serving public servants on Guam, Mayor Melissa Savares. John comes from a family of servants doing good for the people of Guam. Half a day, I am Mayor Melissa Savares, and I humbly ask for one of your votes for my son, Jonathan Savares, for Senator. Sizuas Maasi. I'm John Savares and I approve this message. Paid for by the committee to elect Jonathan Savares, Josephine Saunders, treasurer. Hi today, I'm Kilina from Docs City College. And I'm Kristen from Docs Daycare and Preschool. And we are so honored to be caring for the children of Guam. The Governor's Child Care Programs help businesses like ours to really focus on the kids. These programs also help nonprofits and after school programs and grandparents and so many families. Visit www.guamchildcare.com to learn more about the Governor's Child Care Programs. This ad is paid for with funds administered by DPHSS. My name is Lisa Tahaji. I'm from the village of Umatic. I lost my job during COVID. For one year, I was staying with a family member, but I knew I had to find a place to stay. I was desperately looking for a home. I found out about the Relief Center from the Governor Lou and Lieutenant Governor Josh's Facebook page. I wasn't sure if they could help, but I thought I'd take a chance. I walked into the center and the staff were so understanding and compassionate, they helped me. Within a week, through their assistance, I was called to sign a lease agreement. My kids and I now have a roof over our heads, and I'm grateful for the help of the administration and the Relief Center. For anyone who needs any government assistance, I encourage you to visit the Relief Center. They are there to help. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together.
KUAM Sports Weekend Roundup is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness starts with G. Guam will be hosting the FIBA U15 Oceania Championship at the UOG Cowboy Fieldhouse November 21st through the 26th. Tournament passes for the competition are available online. Check out guamtime.net. We'll be challenging Australia, New Zealand, uh, and the other Pacific Islanders. Our youth group right now, we're actually teaching them to play with a shot clock, uh, just like pushing down the ball, like maybe within 16 seconds and, and playing uh, like with ball, great ball movement, knowing when to shoot, knowing when to drive, drive and kick. And I, I think that uh, it's a, it's a, it'll be a great challenge for them. For our young players to have success on the court, coach Tim says confidence and teamwork will be key. Right now we're, we're trying to minimize dribbling because I feel like we, we dribble a lot here in, this, in, in our island. So we're trying to do a lot of uh, ball movement, player movement, not just uh, dribble the ball too much, just uh, go out there. And uh, most important thing really is uh, decision making for, for our youth group. Guam Football Association and the GFA Women's Committee signed pledges with Guam Cancer Care as its newest partners in the organization's Join the Fight campaign against cancer. GFA launched its new four-year strategic plan with participation growth, specifically girls and women in the sport as part of the strategy's five main pillars. Headlining the event was an appearance by the Masakata, Guam's women's national team, as well as the U-17 and U-20 national team training squads, assisting with event matches for girls in the U-6 through U-15 age division. The Bulldogs led 14-6 in the first set before the Islanders would go on a 9-2 run to trail 16-15. Ukudu went on to take the set 25-18 off an ace. JFK would even the match, taking the second set 25-22, courtesy of Felicita Rivera. The Bulldogs controlled the third, winning 25-19. The Islanders cruised to the 25-11 fourth set win as Aika Kanakatsu controlled the net, setting up the fifth and final set. Hannah Meinick whipped up a couple of aces to give Ukuru the 8-6 lead in the fifth. Teammate Tiara Munya found an opening in the defense to score and help keep the Bulldogs ahead 12-8. Ukudu went on to win 15-10 for this year's championship trophy after JFK's return sailed out of bounds. Communication, we had to work together drown out the crowd, trust in each other. Those are those are most of the biggest key factors of winning this game. It feels great. Like nothing, there's nothing that feels better than this. Volleyball is all about communication and my team really brought it, you know. We wanted it, so we got it. It's uh, one point at a time, you know. Uh, don't overplay and just like cover. This is Ukuru's first uh, girls volleyball championship, so we're making history. Our name is going to be in the school's books for sure. The IT&E Rugby Flag Championship for middle school players was played at the Weddingale Rugby Field in Dedidale. The free event featured boys and girls teams in seven-a-side matches. Each game was played with seven-minute halves. Representing the girls were the Lady Obispos and the St. Anthony Raiders, who won the flag championship. The Mini Barbarians, St. Paul, and champs Bob Deal hit the field on the boys' side. The tournament was used to help our younger players with skill and development, also as an initiative to get the public and private schools to interact in rugby matches at the middle school level. For more info, follow Guam Rugby Club underscore Barbarians on Instagram or check out Guam Rugby Football Union on Facebook. 280 young jiu-jitsu competitors ages 4 to 17 years old hit the mats for the 2022 Putgan Jiu-Jitsu Tournament at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse. The inaugural competition featured gi and no gi events in 70 different divisions. There were over 1,000 spectators who attended the event with local food and retail vendors. Results now overall gi. Otto Jiu-Jitsu Guam placed first. Heights Academy took second. Carlson Gracie Guam was third. Overall, no gi, Otto Shiu Jitsu Guam first, Heights Academy second, Carlson Gracie Guam in third. Pee Wee Gi Division winners, Heights Academy Guam. Pee Wee No Gi Division winners, Otto Shiu Jitsu Guam. 
Octos also took the Junior Gi Division along with the Junior No Gi Division while sweeping the Teen and Juvenile Gi and No Gi Divisions. Four Guam swimmers excelled at the Langoy Pilipinas Mascara Festival Swim Meet held at the St. John's Institute Sports Pavilion in the Philippines. Representing the Menhoven Swim Club, Mia Lee, John Moore, Israel Poppy, and Kiana Santos, each achieving new personal records as they competed against more than 300 athletes in the two-day long meet. Representing 27 teams, swimmers six years old and up competed in 11 individual events and relays at the international meet. Guam was awarded 19 medals, 14 gold, three silver, and two bronze. Most outstanding swimmer medals were awarded to swimmers Israel Poppy and Mia Lee for their high point placement in multiple events. Our athletes continue to demonstrate grit, skill, and their commitment to the sport, said Coach Andy Lee of Manhoban Swim Club. We're grateful to have the opportunity to compete with swimmers from across the Philippines. Make sure to catch this Monday's NFL games on the stations of KUAM. Monday, October 31st at 3 in the morning, NFL on CBS, Channel 11, Pittsburgh Steelers at Philadelphia Eagles. Then at 10.15 on NBC, KUAM TV 8, Sunday Night Football, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers take on Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. KUAM Sports Weekend Roundup is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness starts with G. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. I want my streaming. I want my TV. Ooh. Streaming TV. Switch between live TV and your favorite streaming apps with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch your shows and multiple devices all at the same time, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, or savings for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, streaming TV. My name is Leonza Selvage, and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. I think that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children. I think it's something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about Program in Penelin from the mayor's offices here. And uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief that this program offered free childcare services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit. So when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful to the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for childcare? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. Don't need to work, babe. Keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replay. And I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. My name is Lisa Tahaji. I'm from the village of Yamatic. I lost my job during COVID. For one year, I was staying with a family member, but I knew I had to find a place to stay. I was desperately looking for a home. I found out about the Relief Center from the Governor Lou and Lieutenant Governor Josh's Facebook page. I wasn't sure if they could help, but I thought I'd take a chance. I walked into the center and the staff were so understanding and compassionate, they helped me. Within a week, through their assistance, I was called to sign a lease agreement. My kids and I now have a roof over our heads, and I'm grateful for the help of the administration and the Relief Center. For anyone who needs any government assistance, I encourage you to visit the Relief Center. They are there to help.
Power on with the strength of a Ram during Ram Power Days, happening now at Cars Plus Guam. Save up to $8,000 off on a brand new Ram truck today. My name is Jose Delgado, and you can contact me at 671-929-3645 to schedule a test drive, or you can visit our website at carsplusguam.com to learn more. Cars Plus, driven by you. And before we go tonight, here are your birthday shout outs. Got some weekend birthdays to do, so let's start on the 29th of October, Saturday. Happy birthday to Celine, Janessa, Escalera, Kenga, and to our birthday girl, happy birthday number 14. We hope you have a wonderful island weekend. Mom, dad, and the family are very, very proud of you. Deja Reef Rankin Santos, happy sweet 16th birthday to my love. Hoping nothing but the best for your future. We love you so much, your family near and far. And happy birthday, big number six, to Liam Elliot Paulino from your Mendoza and Paulino and Pesina Familia. Three of them, they're all very, very proud of you. On Sunday, October 30th, happy birthday to Shanisa Santos. Shanisa celebrates birthday number eight in 2022. And may you have the best birthday ever because you are my greatest present ever. Aw, love you so much from mom, Ben Ben, and all. Also, we want to send an equally happy birthday to Tobias Calvo Kiagua, celebrating birthday number 16 this year. Toby, man, play above the rim. Have a wonderful, wonderful birthday. Awesome Guamanians. Man, we celebrate them so happily. We're so, it's, we're so lucky to be a part of this amazing community. So happy birthday to each and every one. And you can be a part of the Cold Stone Crew Mary Birthday Club by checking out KUAM. Dot com. And that's our show. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nick Delgado. Have a safe weekend.